Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Um, tonight's uh, camera, live cam, is from the uh, Hillsboro Inlet, a place that I often take my boat out fishing out of this inlet. As you can see, it's evening right now. What time is it? It is uh, it's 6.30 and it's already dark as heck out there. Well, daylight savings or whatever heck they do to screw with our day. Um, I like my days uh, light longer. That's what I would prefer. But it is absolutely gorgeous. 76 degrees, the cool weather, the cool evenings are starting already. I'm loving it myself. And as you can see, there's a light up there. There's a lighthouse spinning around. Let's see if it hits us. Yep, just hit us. Uh, one of the uh, oldest lighthouses in Florida that still uses a crystal or prismatic lens or whatever the hell they call it. And you can see the dredge equipment here that they're constantly dredging out the inlet. Anyways, I'm not here to give you a tour of the uh, inlet cam, but you can go to this anytime you like. It's a uh, Hillsboro uh, uh, inlet cam. Pretty cool in the daytime. You get to see some cool boats and uh, it's really beautiful. Uh, take, it, take a look at it when you can in the day. Uh, I'd love to show you a daytime picture, but <laughs> I can't right now. Anyway, let's take a look at the uh, precious metal prices. And, uh, you know, it's status quo. It's kind of just sitting where we've been in that 1850, 2000 trading level for like two months now. Uh, this election, uh, uncertainties, all kinds of strange stuff going there. We're, we're just like, as I said a couple times, purgatory. We're in precious metals purgatory. Uh, um, we're, we're, we're just sitting and waiting. Most of us, most of you, except me, I have to look at this every day, five days a week. It's my job. I'm not complaining. There's worse jobs, and I've had them in my lifetime. Uh, however, uh, uh, just looking at these prices, just trading in this particular range has been kind of painful for the last two months because we know what's going to happen. We know what the end results are of a uh, uh, endlessly printing the dollars and a $2.1 trillion CARE Act or whatever the heck it was. Uh, and uh, MMT, you know, mon um, uh, modern monetary theory, uh, theory, or I believe that's what it's called, where the Fed is talking about directly paying people, you know, uh, that don't work, uh, like like a salary for doing nothing. This can only end badly. And let me remind you one thing: the United States dollar is a fiat currency. We are the longest surviving fiat currency in history. Uh, we are the experiment right now. This You can fact check me uh, uh, all you want uh, if you'd like to, uh, but no, don't bother. This is, we are, we are it. We are the longest surviving fiat currency in history. And it, our dollar just buys less and less and less every year. It just declines, declines, declines in, in its buying power. Uh, look, what, what we'll be able to buy today will be far more than what we'll be able to buy next year uh, for the same dollar in 10 years from now, if the dollar is even around 10 years from now. Uh, and if you just take a look in our lifetimes, no matter how old you are, uh, you will see that, uh, um, that uh, excuse me, you'll see that uh, the dollar is uh, worth less and less every year. I mean, how old are you? Uh, do you remember how, how much was gasoline when you were uh, 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 first driving at the age of 16? Uh, how much did the Coca-Cola cost? How much was a television set? How much was the college education? How much was the steak? Uh, and, and as you know, it, it, the cost of these products don't necessarily go up. And in, in fact, technology causes the prices of these products to go down. Our efficiency gets better. The reason that the products get more and more expensive is because the dollar gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. They just keep printing more and more. And uh, we've talked about Bretton Woods agreements, uh, how we violated that. And at some point, the dollar, you know, the rest of the world is just going to decouple from the dollar, like, like China is doing, has done, uh, and is doing even more so, like Russia has done, uh, not because they wanted to, it's because we forced them to. Uh, and uh, like a lot of other countries are going to start doing, uh, they're going to do these direct swaps. Uh, with each other. And oddly enough, direct swaps, that's kind of like peer-to-peer -peer trading, which is almost like Bitcoin. Uh, and it's funny, we're all talking about fiat, we're talking about Bitcoin, we're talking about the dollar right now. This all ties into my next subject, uh, oddly enough. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, 1870, uh, we're in that trading range. But silver, I'm very proud of silver the last week or two. It hasn't been super erratic, you know, trading in those $2 ranges, you know, going down to 2291 up to 20 Five. It's kind of been trading in this $24, $25 range. Um, <laughs> but who knows? As soon as I say that, maybe it'll do differently on Monday. Uh, but overall, you know, trying to 
if you're trading, I, I wouldn't be a day trader in precious metals, and I do this every day. I watch these markets. I just wouldn't do it uh, because it, it is volatile, and you can give it all back in one day. You can make a little bit each day, each day, each day, and then you can give it all back in one day. And, I, and I'm sure that the opposite of that can happen, but uh, too many variables. But the one thing I can assure you that on a medium and long-term basis, you cannot go wrong with the stuff. It's just going to – we're in a bull market for it. Uh, and and again, my my direct I, I'm tying the dollar devaluation of the dollar directly with the increase in the value of gold, silver, and platinum. The reason the price of gold, silver, and platinum are increasing is because the devaluation of dollar and and the the, the decrease of the buying power of the dollar. To to put it simply, and, and it's just going to get worse. Goldman Sachs has a uh, 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 predicted a 20% decline in the value of the dollar next year. That is effing huge. And, you know, is there any wonder with a 2.1, what was it, trillion dollar CARE Act, and now they're talking about MMT, modern uh, 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 monetary theory, where they're talking about paying people for staying home, you know, just, just for being alive, you get a paycheck. Who? And they're going to just print money to do that, and they think that, you know, money grows on trees. It's magical. It's not backed by anything. Again, the United States is the longest surviving fiat currency in history. Um, <clears throat> boy, I can see, I would never thought I'd see uh, the dollar in big trouble in my lifetime, but I'm kind of think I'm seeing it here. Uh, and again, uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, what is going on out there as well, as far as how things are changing. And I just, before I say that, I think we're going to see about par value on Monday. Uh, we have gold and silver and platinum has been kind of unexciting for the last two months. It's just kind of been sitting flat in this range. And uh, uh, I think we're going to see the same thing on Monday, maybe slightly up, unless we see a, a big decline in the value of the dollar. So uh, let me move along there because not, not to talk about we've been in the same trading range for quite some time. Uh, and it's actually kind of like a purgatory, as I've said a few times. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's still a great buying opportunity. Uh, at least it's not just chugging its way up and you're losing the opportunity to buy right now. As long as you haven't had to sell in the last month or two, uh, you're doing fine. Uh, and again, it's provided you an opportunity to buy if you, you want to cost average uh, or a little bit lower. And again, if you bought stuff at a lower level, I still wouldn't hesitate buying at these levels. There's, there's plenty of money to be made here, I believe, uh, in, in the new year coming up. Uh, I'm pretty certain of it. Anyways, let me move along to my next subject. We were talking about fiat. We were talking about uh, uh, do the dollar. We were talking about gold and the relationship of all this stuff. And we've been talking about cryptos, too. One of the things that I wanted to kind of uh, talk about real quickly tonight is, uh, is the argument of gold versus Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. And it's a false, ar it's a false argument. Uh, there is no argument. Uh, the argument would be like saying, uh, which which is better, an apple or an orange? Uh, <laughs> they're totally two different things. Gold and silver, platinum, is a store of wealth. It has been, it is a tangible, and tangible means that you can hold it in your hands. You can physically, you know, it, it, there's some physical aspect to it, like land is tangible, I believe. Uh, gold is tangible. Uh, uh, you know, platinum is tangible. Uh, products that you can physically hold. I guess even food could be considered tangible if you have it and you're, you know you own it. Correct me if I'm wrong, folks, in the comments below there. But gold is a tangible product uh, versus Bitcoin. And what Bitcoin is, it is a medium of exchange. It is not a tangible uh, product. It is not gold and silver. And there's a big difference between Bitcoin and gold anyway. Uh, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But really, I think there's a false argument going on here, uh, this uh, gold versus Bitcoin. Uh, I think Bitcoin, I, I'm just like so impressed with the money that people make. However, you also see Bitcoin, you don't hear about the people that have taken these uh, 12000 down to $5,000 rides too, who've lost the money as well. Uh, so very speculative. And I think that's pretty cool. If you go in and you can make you know, it, it's new, it's exciting, and uh, I, I think it's, it's a great product and, and as far as uh, uh, a medium of exchange. I think it is the future. I think Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, 
is how the future of exchange is going to be between people, uh, uh, eliminating the middleman. It's going to be direct peer-to-peer -peer from one person to another. However, do not be mistaken, it is not a tangible, uh, uh, it's not money. It's not money. It is a way to exchange money and value because what is Bitcoin paid off in? It's paid off in dollars. It's paid. It could be paid off in product as well, but it's paid off in dollars. It's paid off in uh, uh, pesos. It's paid off in uh, rubles. It's paid off in. Uh, so uh, Bitcoin uh, is actually uh, just a medium of, ch of exchange, and it is a great one at that, in my opinion. And is it a store of value? Uh, yeah, I guess you can say it is, as long as people have faith in it, and that's what fiat is. Uh, fiat is a faith-based medium of exchange. That's what the dollar is. Uh, it's a faith-based medium of exchange. What gold and silver and platinum is, is a tangible product like land, something that is very, very limited, that is tangible. Uh, it's not zeros and ones. It's not a piece of paper. It's not a digital number in your bank account. It's not a digital number in your Bitcoin. It is a physical product made by stars. That's very new, neutron stars, if I'm correct. Uh, and we'll get into that as well. That is a tangible product that, that can't be made. It, well, uh, that could be arguable that it could be made, but uh, it's, it's not in a usable form. <laughs> it's not man-made and it can't be man-made. Uh, but it, it's totally two different things. This is Bitcoin, cryptos, or a medium of exchange. Uh, gold and silver and platinum is a tangible store of wealth. Big, big difference. Uh, and both can be investments. If you're making money, it can be an investment. But which is a better store of wealth? I'd go with the one that was made by stars and neutrino stars. Uh, anyways, I wanted to take a look at... Uh, oh, hold on. Before I get into that, let's take a look at... Uh, um, oh, I'm going through my articles. What is fiat money? Well, fiat money is government-issued currency that is not backed by a physical commodity, such as gold or silver, but rather, and here, here's the key word, by a physical, i.e. tangible commodity such as gold or silver. Well, neither is Bitcoin. However, uh, I do find that Bitcoin, and I, I find it appealing. I, I think, wow, if I can... Uh, 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 s s not have to deal with the bank as a middle person or Visa, MasterCard or whatever and just deal peer-to-peer -peer with people and pay them directly without any percentage out. Uh, uh, what a cool way to uh, uh, make payments and do business with people. That's pretty cool. Uh, however, there's one thing that concerns me with that as well is that uh, one thing that most people forget and that I've always been cognizant of is that there's one thing we know absolutely, absolutely is that Governments and banks hate competition, and they make the rules. So I don't think they're going to allow private uh, uh, cryptocurrencies uh, in the future. I really don't. That's my belief. I think they're allowing it right now. It's like a test run. They want to see how it goes. But at some point, I think they're going to put all the stops to it. And uh, it won't be the end of cryptocurrency. You know what it'll be? It'll be the beginning of their own type of cryptocurrency, which in my opinion will be trackable. They'll be able to take it away from you if they want to. For example, if you owe a traffic fine, they'll just take it right from you somehow. Uh, but maybe I might be misunderstanding that a little bit. But there's one thing we know that, that governments and banks hate competition. Um, and they don't even like gold. They don't want you to hold gold. They want you to hold paper money. They want you to hold bonds. They want you to hold treasuries. They want you to hold corporate debt. That's what they want you to hold. They don't want you to hold something tangible in your hands. Uh, are you crazy? <laughs> That's real money. They don't want you holding real money. They want you holding their fiat and dealing in their fiat. But anyways, I digress a little bit. Uh, pretty cool article I saw here, CoinDesk, uh, uh, um, and talks, New York Fed's Bitcoin is just another fiat claims this sparks controversy. Um, where is it down here? I thought this was going uh, pretty cool. Uh, what is Bitcoin? Martin and Lee post that Bitcoin's ecosystems, true news, blah, 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 blah. anyway. Um, Simply put, there had never been a true mean to conduct electronic transfers without a third party. And that's something I was just talking about. And I, I like that point of it. I think that's really a great point of uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, however, it's uh, history provides a lesson about what makes good money as well as what makes a good transfer mechanism. So even in this article, they're talking about it being a transfer mechanism, not really a tangible uh, form of real money. And in my belief, uh, I think that the governments are going to take over cryptocurrencies somehow. 
Um, and uh, it'll be theirs, and they're going to make it illegal for uh, all the other ones to uh, uh, <laughs> exist. Uh, however, let me move it along to another thing talking about gold. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? There's so <laughs> I, you could look at this page forever. Uh, I could at least. Look at all that different types of gold. Uh, meanwhile, uh, crypto art is pretty cool too. But really, is there any such thing as a crypto coin made out of gold? That would be kind of cool if your cryptos were backed by gold. Wow, back a crypto, a crypto backed gold. Could that even exist? I don't understand cryptos enough to, to do that, but I might be on board for that. Uh, but anyways, uh, what's the big difference between gold that you're looking at right here and the tangible form and digital money? that exist in zeros and ones, exist in cyberspace, so to speak. What is the big difference between the two? Um, well, again, in my opinion, uh, cryptocurrencies, if you're going to look at it as it, when the Fed takes it over, which they will at some point, and, and central governments and bankers will take it over, it, it'll be a electronic fiat currency. It'll be probably a somewhat fixed value. They'll have control over the value. They'll have control over everything. Uh, but it'll have the same kind of, uh, it'll have a lot of same kind of qualities. Uh, and uh, that's my opinion. Uh, oh, no, sorry, I didn't mean to stutter there. I was looking where I'm going next here. And uh, again, what's the big difference between cryptocurrencies and gold? Well, one's man made and one is natural. Uh, and if you take a look at it, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is who made cryptocurrencies. Uh, I trust this guy. Yeah, he, he keeps my computer going. He's the reason I'm talking to you right now. Technology, man. Uh, the technology guys, the guys that create this stuff. However, uh, this stuff is still, no matter how you slice it and dice it, it's created by man. Uh, there's nothing physical you can hold in your hand. It's zeros and one. Uh, zeros and one. Meanwhile, gold is made by stars. It's made by supernovas. I mean, uh, that, that gold coin that you have in your hand, that gold wedding band on your finger, that gold chain on your neck, you know, uh, that was made by a, a neutrino star. And it's pretty kind of cool how it was made. Gold is thought to have been produced, thought to have been produced in a supernova nucleosynthesis and from the collision of neutron stars. Oh, come on, man. Tell me that ain't cool and tell me that ain't like super limited. They, scientists know gold is very limited in our, in our world. Uh, you, you can't make it. They set up here that you can actually create it in a nuclear uh, uh, setting, but it's made under mercury and it's uh, radioactive. So uh, uh, they have created like little microns of gold in a nuclear reactor. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But if you think about it, uh, it's made by supernovas, so versus uh, made by this guy, uh, and I trust this guy again. But anyway, big difference between gold and silver, uh, in my opinion. Uh, one is a tangible store of wealth. The other is a potentially wonderful, wonderful form of exchange. So comparing the two, you can't. It's like apples and oranges. Uh, you know, they may look. <laughs> They may seem similar, but they're two totally different things. Uh, anyways, that's my opinion. If you got, uh, hey, give me your opinion. And if I said anything you think was incorrect, uh, don't feel free to mention it down in the comments. I'll certainly respond to it. Anyways, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins. It's been a long week for me, uh, buying, selling uh, all kinds of precious metals. We've been very busy in the store. Uh, the best products out there are still Krugerrands. I sound like a broken record, but... Krugerrands are still the most widely available, cheapest product uh, nationwide. So if you don't live in my area, it's a great product. It's cheaper than Eagles. It's cheaper than Maple Leafs. Um, and there are other cheaper products out there. And if you have a good coin dealer uh, nearby that, or in precious metal dealers, you can talk to him about it. Uh, he'll probably steer you, steer you into them. And don't hesitate to buy cheaper products. However, when I say cheaper and readily available, I mean that you can get them anywhere. A lot of this stuff, like gold bars, are getting a little harder to find because a lot of these mints, like I think the uh, uh, Pamp Swiss Mint is still closed. I could be wrong, but a lot of these mints really haven't producing stuff. So uh, the South African Mint, I guess, is producing a lot of gold because we're still seeing a lot of that out there. Uh, a lot of gold eagles out there, but you know, at the price, you're, you know, gold eagles are anywhere from what uh, 85 to 115 bucks over the price of gold. That's pretty pricey. I'd stick with uh, Krugerrands in the uh, sub-$80 uh, range and, uh, you know, in large quantities in the sub-$70 range. 
Uh, that would be my opinion. And as far as silver, 90% still the cheapest, in my opinion. 100-ounce uh, bars, there's some good deals on some scratchy 100-ounce uh, uh, bars. Uh, they're off-brand, not Engelhards or Johnson Matthews, but other good brands. And uh, above that, I would say the next best deal would be generic 1-ounce silvers. Well, that's it for me, and uh, I'm going to try to enjoy the weekend, and I hope you do too as well, folks. Hey, listen, really, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope I'm helpful in some ways. Um, and again, I think next year it's going to be, and, and the new year is going to be far more exciting as far as precious metals prices go. The last two months have been pretty boring. It's bored me as well. Uh, I hope I've made it a little more bearable for you. Uh, but again, I hate keep repeating the same things. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my videos if you haven't, and this is your first time watching them. I really appreciate it. And uh, as I said, have a great weekend. Good night.